Coming up, need an entire passenger train turned around? Well, a turntable just won't work, so why not just use a Y? Today, Amtrak is going to demonstrate how all this works. It's kind of like a three-point turn for a train. But don't worry, this will be nothing like driver's ed, so put yourself in park right here and stay tuned. That's all next. Light engines, including the Interstate Heritage Unit, are headed toward Peachtree Station in Atlanta, Georgia. Once they pass, Amtrak 19, the southbound Crescent, will pull in and unload its passengers. Usually, their next stop would be Anniston, Alabama, and eventually New Orleans, but the train is terminating in Atlanta due to track work down the line from here. So today, we get to watch them turn the entire train around to get it ready for the northbound run of the Crescent. And all of this is going to happen not far from Peachtree Station at Howell Y. Now, you've probably seen railroads turn locomotives before on turntables like this one. It's in Somerville, Georgia. These were common in the days of steam to get engines to face forward. These days, freight locomotives are often run back to back, meaning a forward-facing operator's cab is available no matter which way the lash up is pointed. But what if you need an entire train turned around? Maybe it's a passenger train that's only set up to run in one direction. Well, that's where a Y comes in. Let me demonstrate with this crude drawing. This is actually pretty simple, just three curved lines. All right, so the train is going forward here. Then a switch is flipped. All right, now it's reversing. Then another switch is flipped. Now it's going forward again. And then boom, the train is turned around. Okay, I am not much of an artist, so let's get the drone in the air and see how this is all done. First of all, Amtrak 19 will need to pass over these diamonds. Here, Norfolk Southern crosses over CSX, and Amtrak is currently waiting on the NS line from Atlanta to Greenville, South Carolina. By the way, CSX controls the movement over these diamonds, and Amtrak will have to wait for them to get a train across before proceeding. That's right, I'm waiting on CSX now. Standing by for CSX. There was once a manned tower at Howe Y, but CSX now controls things from Jacksonville, Florida. Anyway, after waiting on CSX, 19 was on the move. Diverging approach, Howe Y, 19. Diverging approach, Howe Y, 19 out. You just heard the head end call the signal and the conductor confirm. There were some workers trackside today, and the Amtrak engineer made sure to let them know he was coming. Okay, they've now gotten the train to a place where the conductor, who's riding in the last car, can see the signal bridge. And that a do that 19. Now, it's time to back up. All right, 19. Conductor's on the point looking at a clear at Hawaii. Clear to shove them south. 30 cars, half authorized speed at King Plow. All right, half authorized at King Plow. Conductor on the point, got a clear signal Hawaii. Good for 30 cars, shove them south on 19. Keep in mind, as they reverse, the conductor in the last car is basically the engineer's eyes and ears and is calling the signals and how many car lengths they're clear for. Railroaders often measure things in car lengths when making moves. All right, 19, looking at a clear at King Plow, I have authorized speed. Clear to show 30 cars, oh. All right, clear King Plow. Half authorized, still good for 30. Also, the turnouts the train will pass over are all remotely controlled, and no one will need to climb down off the train to flip a switch. 19 has a diverging approach to King Plow. Going ahead on that half authorized. Diverging approach King Plow. Going ahead on that half authorized. 19 out. They would eventually stop at this signal briefly, then move forward to another one around 400 yards northeast. Then the time-honored railroad tradition of hurry up and wait. Stop signal 10th Street. Stop signal 10th Street, 19 out. Before Amtrak could move again, Norfolk Southern would need to get some trains onto the line that runs by Peachtree Station. 
50 out of Virgin Clear, how on? Downtown Atlanta is back there. Atlanta's Amtrak station isn't actually downtown, it's basically on the border of Midtown in the city's Brookwood neighborhood. Meanwhile, the waiting continued. That's Atlanta dispatcher. Dispatcher 19 -0. Amtrak 19 shouldn't be long now. Gotta get a 371 by, then we'll get you lined out, okay? All right, waiting on that 371. Appreciate it, okay? Here's that train the dispatcher was talking about. About 20 minutes have passed at this signal, and it's finally time to go back to the station. All right, 19, got a clear signal here at 10th Street. Clear, 10th Street, 19 out. On that half authorized. Half authorized. This aerial shot is probably the best look at how why. It is definitely a complex area. The tracks Amtrak is currently crossing over are operated by CSX, and 19 is now getting back onto the Norfolk Southern Line that goes north to Greenville, South Carolina. Around 20 minutes later at Peachtree Station, here's the result of all those moves. The train is now ready to become Amtrak 20, the northbound crescent, which will leave later tonight. You know, the concept of wiring a train isn't all that complicated, but it does take careful coordination between the engineer, conductor, and dispatcher to make sure it all goes according to plan. Okay, so there is another way you can turn entire trains. It's called a reversing loop or balloon loop. Let me show you with one more crude drawing. Believe it or not, this is a whole lot simpler than a Y, and the train goes forward the entire time. You only need one switch. The only downside is you need a whole lot of real estate. Of course, some commuter trains are designed so they hardly ever have to be turned. They have a locomotive on one end and a cab car on the other. Many countries around the world use these. This one in Germany is pretty sleek. But here in America, we found some pretty innovative ways to make cab cars. Like this cabbage car, an old locomotive that's part operator's cab and part baggage car. I did an entire video about these and I'll leave a link below. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.